I love what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. He says, tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith. Forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find complications in somebody else, if you find fault with someone, release the same gift of forgiveness to them. Give them a little bit of margin for error. What should we do with all these complicated people that we're stuck with? I think we should tolerate their weaknesses. Not because we are amazing and they aren't. No, it, it's because every single one of us has something about us that someone in our life is tolerating. Anytime you read Colossians 3.13, you think of somebody. Well, guess what? There's somebody in your world who reads Colossians 3.13 and thinks of me, and they think of you. I was talking to, I was talking to a friend, and, and we were kind of going back and forth about some, some people that used to be on his team, and, and he used a phrase that, that you probably have heard a lot that just, it really troubles me. I said, hey, how's, how's so-and-so doing? He said, I don't know. They're dead to me. I said, dead to you? They died? What did they do? That would cause you to, I don't know, cerebrally murder them? And what it is, is it's a part of a cancel culture that says, hey, if, if you don't agree with me, or if you say something that I find offensive, well then, I can just erase you out of my life. We can... We could, we could just be done. And so what cancel culture does is it gives us some very, very interesting math, okay? And here's, here's the interesting math that cancel culture gives us. It's this. It's they hurt me equals I get to cancel them. However, uh, if I hurt them, we think, well, give me a break. I had COVID. I lost a family member. I was going through a lot. My kids were wilding out. I, I, I got sued. My company restructured. I was depressed. I had a lot of pressure. So we want other people to give us the benefit of the doubt for our very complicated behind the scenes that they're completely unaware of, but we'll give them an emotional funeral for them and our hearts for their behavior. And maybe that's okay for regular people, but I'd argue it's not okay for Christian you and I should make space for other people's complications and pray that they're doing the same for us. I know some people think, I'll do it if everybody does it. But I don't want to be the only one that's forgiven. I don't want to be the only one that's given grace. Nobody's giving me a break. My parents never gave me one. My coach never gave me one. My boss never gives me one. My family never gives me one. And you do, I get that. But are you really going to let someone else's behavior dictate yours? Even if they never change, it doesn't mean you can't. If everybody else does it, you'll do it. Well, what if they need to see what it looks like before they can? What if they need to see it modeled? Well, in that case, thank God they got you. Thank God they live with you. Thank God they work with you. Thank God they married you. Thank God they're being raised by you. If you're a Christian or you want to be one, it's an invitation to be different. So let's be different, ladies and gentlemen. Even if they never change, it doesn't mean you can't. Look at how God treats us in all that is complicated with us, and then I think we should copy and paste it into our relationships. 